Today's video is brought to you by Veloy. So not too long ago on the channel, I did a video where I built out an extreme budget film scanning or digitizing setup using a low megapixel camera with the entire outfit costing just under 200 pounds. And the results from this setup were actually quite impressive, especially if you're just posting to web or need to do smaller prints. But for anything bigger than that, uh, they quickly became limiting just at 12 megapixels. So after doing this video, it got me curious to see what options are out there if you wanted to achieve higher resolution scans but not go and spend thousands of dollars on a high megapixel camera. And that led me to the world of pixel shift technology where I ended up testing two different setups, one in particular that really didn't cost all that much yet produced some pretty large final scans. So in this video today, I wanna to share the two different setups that I tested out as well as the results. Uh, one of them is a camera that I already owned uh, that costs a little bit more. And then the other is a setup that I put together specifically for this video as I went down this rabbit hole. And also wanna briefly talk about some other pixel shift options as well. And I hope that all of this just gives you uh, something to think about as you maybe build out your own setup. So pixel shift or high resolution mode, you know, not every camera has this, but nowadays I would say most new cameras that are coming out do have some type of mode similar to this. But, uh, you know, even dating back five or six years, there are cameras on the market that did have this technology in them. And if you're not familiar, how this works is basically the camera takes a number of images where it uses the sensor stabilization to shift the sensor ever so slightly, sometimes by a pixel, sometimes even by half a pixel, and then it takes all those images and it merges them into one raw file. And most of the time, the purpose of this is to create a final image with much higher resolution, but it can also do things like give you better color and less false detail. As I went down this rabbit hole, I realized that a camera I own actually has a pixel shift mode. That is the Lumix S52X that I'm filming with right now. So uh, this is the one that I began with. We're going to take a look at it first. And then, like I said, we'll jump into the budget build I put together after that, which provided almost equally as impressive results. So for my S52X setup, I'm using the Sigma 70 millimeter macro art lens. This is a really well reviewed lens and still pretty affordable. I paid 250 pounds here in the UK for it used. And then for my scanning setup, I'm using the products from Veloy, who's a sponsor of this video today. And I've been using their equipment ever since I first started digitizing my film here at home using a digital camera setup. And what I'm using is their Advancer, which gives me a really nice solid base with leveling feet and then multiple film masks and holders for 120 and 35 millimeter, which makes scanning film very quick and efficient moving from one frame to the next. This has cut down my time substantially. And this has been my go-to just because I shoot multi-format, but they also have their easy 35 setup. And I did a video about this on the channel a while ago. This is really nice if you're only doing 35 millimeter film, just because it's so simple to set up, you just attach it to your camera, you can set the whole thing on the desk, you don't need to level anything, and you also don't need space for a copy stand and things like that. So yeah, like I said, I've been using their products for a few years, always happy to partner with them on videos like this and uh, talk about their equipment. And I'd highly recommend checking it out if you are looking to put together your own setup at home. Uh, they're also offering viewers of this video 10% off uh, any of their accessories or equipment, and I'll put a link below and also a code that you can use to get that uh, discount. So the S52X has a 24 megapixel sensor, but the high res mode records and merges eight separate images and gives you a 96 megapixel image, which isn't bad at all. And to do this, you simply switch the mode dial to the high res mode and hit the shutter. The camera then takes eight images and merges them in camera and gives you one high res file, as well as the original 24 megapixel raw file. And it's worth kind of pointing out, like I said, the Lumix merges in camera. So does the uh, other camera we're gonna look at today, but other brands and models, you actually have to go and uh, take all of the images that the camera shoots and use some software afterwards to merge them together. For me personally, that would be too much of a hassle. I really like the convenience of doing it in camera. So uh, just something that I did wanna point out and something to keep in mind. But anyways, let's jump on the computer now and we'll take a look at these S52X results. Okay, so jumping into this, we're gonna start just with the single image first from the S52X, 24 megapixels. You can see this is giving us like a 5,100 pixel on the long edge image. So not a bad size at all. And if we go into 100% with this, 
It looks nice and sharp and detailed. This is like a great image. It's gonna give you a lot of flexibility. But you'll see, as soon as we jump to the pixel shift image next, looking up here, see a really big increase in resolution. So we're going from like 5,100 up to 10,400 on the long edge. So a huge increase in final image size and resolution. And also keeping in mind, this is 645 film. So we're cropping because it's a 3.2 sensor. So a 35 millimeter, obviously you get a bit more out of this as well. Um, but if we go into 100% here with the pixel shift image, you'll see it looks great. I mean, nice and sharp and detailed, like really impressive in the keypad here with the numbers and on the sticker and yeah, I mean, it just looks great. But as a comparison, I have the exact same frame here that was scanned with the Nikon CoolScan 9000, which I think is one of the best at-home film scanners when it comes to sharpness and resolution. And if we go into 100% on each, so we have CoolScan on the left here, S52X on the right, little bit of a, a resolution difference between the two. S52X is a little bit uh, larger, but even still, when we compare the two, honestly, it's splitting hairs. Like when I look at them here on the screen, they look so incredibly similar, you know, especially like looking up here at this lettering and the keypad. Maybe the Lumix looks just like a little bit sharper, but uh, probably watching this online on YouTube, the compression is going to make it really difficult to notice any difference. And uh, just as another example, so we'll put um, on the left here is the cool scan and on the right S52X pixel shift. And again, if we go into 100% on both of these, just more of the same. Again, sitting here right now looking at this, the Lumix looks maybe just like a little bit sharper, but probably these like really small differences are just coming down to focus and sharpening with these images. I obviously tried to do the best job possible I could with both of them. Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah, they look very, very close to one another. So cool to see this. And then one more example here with uh, the Lumix, but I'll do cool scan on the left here again and pixel shift Lumix on the right. This is six by seven film now, so we're cropping in even more. So we're down to 9,500. Uh, the resolution on the cool scan is getting bigger with the bigger negative. So a little bit of a difference between the two, but again, if we go into 100%, cool scan on left, Lumix on right. So close to one another. You know, the detail here on the sign maybe looks a little bit better on the Lumix. It's tough to say, but you know, overall, if you scan the image, they look very close to one another. All right, so as we saw, really impressive results from the S52X, but like I said, after seeing that, it did get me curious uh, to start seeing what older models are out there on the market that cost quite a bit less, but still have this pixel ship technology. And I did find quite a few. So first off, there's the original Lumix S5. It has the same sensor as the S52X and the same 96 megapixel high res mode. And I found one for around 600 pounds. There's also the Micro Four Thirds Lumix G9, which I found for 400 pounds. This has an 80 megapixel high res mode. Getting even lower than that, uh, Pentax has a K70, which I found for 300 pounds. It has a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor with pixel shift. And then I looked at some older Olympus models and came across this one in particular. This is an OMD EM52. This has a 16 megapixel micro four thirds sensor with a 64 megapixel high res mode. And I ended up paying 225 pounds for this. That is a really good deal. They do go for more than that. But if you look hard enough, there are good prices to be found. So for this test, I use the same lens for my budget build video, which is an older vintage macro lens, the Vivitar 55 millimeter one to one. And it actually has a pretty good reputation and it only cost me around 50 pounds plus 20 pounds for the adapter. When it comes to shooting with the Olympus, you activate the high res mode in the menu. And just like with the Lumix, hit the shutter and then it takes a series of eight images and combines them in camera, leaving you with one merged raw file. So just a really simple workflow, just like we saw with the S52X and uh, really impressive results. Let's jump on the computer now. And we'll take a look at the files from the Olympus. We'll compare them against the S52X. 
Okay, so again, we're gonna start just with the single exposure image. So 16 megapixels with the Olympus for like 4,400 pixels on the long edge. Uh, the nice thing with the Micro Four Thirds sensor and 645 film is you aren't cropping because the aspect ratio is the same. And I really like this type of sensor for multi-format because it means for 6.7, you're just cropping a bit. And for 35, you're cropping a bit. It's kind of a nice balance between all formats uh, versus 3.2, where you're kind of cropping in constantly as you start to work with medium format. But 16 megapixels, you know, not a bad file size here. This image looks pretty nice, sharp, detailed for what it is. But again, as soon as we jump to this pixel shift image, this is jumping up to 9,000 pixels. So a huge increase compared to the 16 megapixel file, a big jump up and at 100%, you can see this looks nice. Uh, it did a even with this older lens, it did a pretty good job with the fine detail here with these numbers on the keypad and in the sticker. Considering the cost of this setup, you know, it, it is impressive. And if we go to comparison mode again, and we take the Lumix on the left with the Sigma lens, Olympus on the right, you can see a little bit bigger still with the Lumix, but if we go into 100% and compare the two, I can notice a difference right away looking at them on the computer screen here. Uh, the Lumix does look a little bit sharper, but uh, again, on YouTube, you might not be able to tell. It's pretty close between one another. And also when you took these, if you went and sized them and sharpened them for print and then printed them, you might be hard pressed to see any difference between them. Uh, same thing here. So Lumix on the left and then we'll go Olympus on the right. We'll wait for these two to load up. And then same thing, 100%, both of these. Again, right away, I can see like a little bit more detail and sharpness in this grill here, but they're very close to one another. They both look good, to be honest. And there's a pretty big gap between the two when it comes to price, you know, maybe like 2000 pound setup and like 350 pound setup. So, you know, that is the thing that I've noticed as I've done these tests over the years is Yes, better gear and better equipment will give you better results, but uh, oftentimes it's not as drastic as the price difference when you use like a, a cheaper setup. You know, it's still gonna get something that'll get you close even if it's not as good. And that's, I think, really apparent in this situation. And then last one here. So Lumix on left, Olympus on right. Catching up in resolution because we aren't cropping as much with six by seven. But again, going into 100% here, Lumix, Olympus, this looks nicer to me. On the Lumix, a little bit better detail, kind of in the wording here, and maybe down here in some of the grass and whatnot, but yeah, still fairly close. All right, and the last thing I wanna show you is just what this equates to when it comes to printing. So this is the 16 megapixel Olympus file, and if you wanted to go and print this and stay within kind of the original resolution, We'll uncheck resample here. We'll change our DPI to 300. We'll change this to inches. And this would allow us to make a print with like a 14, kind of 14 and a half inch on the long edge dimensions. And if we wanted to go any bigger than that, we'd have to start upsizing. So this isn't too bad, but as soon as we jump to the pixel shift image, if we do the same thing, we go up to image size, uncheck resample, change this to 300 DPI. We'll change this to inches. You'll see all of a sudden with this file, we could go and make a 30 inch uh, wide print or 30 inch on the long edge. So a drastic difference between these two. And especially, you know, when you get up to larger print size, sizes like this, you can start to drop down your DPI. So you could even go to 240, that would be completely fine. And working within this original file size, all of a sudden you could go and make a 37 inch wide or 37 inch on the long edge print, which is pretty massive. And considering, again, the cost of this setup, uh, quite impressive, the flexibility that it gives you. So it's really neat to see, find an older camera like this with this pixel shift technology, and all of a sudden, it just opens up a lot more possibilities when it comes to printing. So overall, I'm really impressed with the results from both of these cameras, but especially from this older Olympus, just factoring in how much both the camera and the lens combo cost. And the results we saw really weren't that far behind the ones from the S5 2X. So yeah, really need to see kind of how much value you can get out of one of these older bodies that has one of these high res modes. So um, 
yeah, hope you enjoyed this one and it gave you something to think about if you are starting to put together uh, like a digital camera, digitizing, scanning setup, whatever you wanna call it, of your own at home. Um, I think you can get a lot of bang for your buck with one of these and it certainly made me reconsider my own setup here. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this one. I just wanna say thanks to Veloy again for partnering up for this video. Like I said, I'll put a link to their stuff below. And um, other than that, just wanna say thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.